Hello guys, finally one of the most requested videos ever. In this video I'm going to talk about the Vina Contracta. It took me a while to do this video because I wanted this video to have all the information I could get. So I hope you enjoy it, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. So let's start. To start, we have to know what is a valve regurgitation. A valve regurgitation is the name for leaking heart valves. Sometimes the condition is minor and may not require treatment. At other times, valve regurgitation places a strain on the heart. It can cause the heart to work harder and it may not pump the same amount of blood. But when a regurgitation occurs? A regurgitation occurs when blood leaks through the valve leaflets that don't close correctly. Valvular regurgitation has long been recognized as an important cause of morbidity and mortality. Although the physical examination can alert the clinician to the presence of significant regurgitation, diagnostic methods are often needed to assess the severity of valvular regurgitation and remodeling of the cardiac chambers in response to the volume overload state. Echocardiography with Doppler has recently emerged as the method of choice for the non-invasive detection and evaluation of the severity and etiology of valvular regurgitation. Valvular regurgitation or incompetence results from various etiologies including valvular degeneration, calcification, fibrosis or infection, alteration of the valvular support apparatus or dilatation of the valve annulus. These conditions cause poor apposition of the valvular leaflets and may lead to prolapse, flail, restricted leaflet motion or valvular perforations. Doppler techniques are sensitive to detection of valvular regurgitation. Doppler echocardiography is critical to initial and longitudinal assessment of patients with valvular regurgitation. It provides detailed anatomic and functional information and clarifies the mechanisms that play a role in valvular regurgitation. Doppler echocardiography not only detects the presence of regurgitation, but also permits to understand mechanisms of regurgitation, quantification of its severity and repercussions. In clinical practice, the management of patients with valvular regurgitation largely integrates the results of echocardiography. It is crucial to provide standards and to establish a baseline list of measurements to be performed when assessing regurgitation. Practically, the evaluation of valvular regurgitation requires the use of different echocardiographic modalities, should integrate multiple parameters, and should be combined with clinical data. So, how can we assess a regurgitation? Two-dimensional transthoracic echocardiography is recommended as first-line imaging in valvular regurgitation and is often sufficient for diagnosis. Two-dimensional transesophageal echocardiography is indicated when transthoracic echocardiography is insufficient or when further diagnostic refinement is required.
On the other hand, three-dimensional echocardiography provides realistic and intuitive anatomic images of valvular apparatus, which may provide additional information, particularly in patients with complex valve lesions and allows more accurate quantification of hemodynamic consequences of the regurgitation on cardiac chambers. In practice, the evaluation of valvular regurgitation starts with two-dimensional transthoracic echocardiography, which can orient readily to a severe regurgitation in presence of a major valvular defect or to a minor leak when the valve anatomy and leaflet motion are normal. A careful assessment of the regurgitant jet by color Doppler using multiple views can rapidly diagnose minimal regurgitation, which don't require further quantification. In the other cases, the use of a more quantitative method like vena contracta and PISA radius is advised when feasible. The first question is how to assess a valve. Transthoracic echocardiography is recommended as the first line imaging modality in valvular regurgitation. The second question is how to estimate the severity of valvular regurgitation. Both vena contracta measurement and the PISA method are recommended to evaluate the severity of regurgitation when feasible. Now, a very important question is, what is a regurgitant jet? Abnormalities in cardiac valves give rise to pulsing reverse flow back through the valve. This is named regurgitant flow and the resultant jet of blood a regurgitant jet. Before we are able to measure the vena contracta, we have to know the regurgitant jet anatomy. A regurgitant jet of blood has three segments. The first segment in purple is the flow convergence. The second segment in blue is the neck or vena contracta. And the third segment in yellow is the jet area or regurgitant jet. So we have to recognize all the segments of the regurgitant jet anatomy in the echocardiogram. On the left, we have a picture of a mitral valve regurgitation. And here we can see all the three segments of the regurgitant jet anatomy. From top to bottom, we can see the first segment, which is the flow convergence, the second part is the neck or vena contracta and at the bottom the third part is the jet area or regurgitant jet. All the segments need to be present when measuring the vena contracta. What is the vena contracta? The vena contracta is the smaller diameter of the regurgitant jet below the convergence zone. The vena contracta is the narrowest portion of a jet that occurs at or just downstream from the orifice. It is characterized by a high velocity and laminar flow. The vena contracta corresponds to the region in which blood passes through the valve. The velocity is highest here. 
The width of the vena contracta is a good marker of the severity of regurgitation because it corresponds to the diameter of the regurgitant orifice area. A diameter exceeding 0.7 cm indicates severe regurgitation. However, like all distance measurements, it is limited by two facts. First, regurgitant orifices may have many geometric shapes. And second, quite often more than one jet is present. Nevertheless, Divina contracta is an important clue to the severity of regurgitation. Now let's talk about the vena contracta width and what represents. The vena contracta width is a semi-quantitative measure for the assessment of valve regurgitation severity. When we hear vena contracta, we automatically think in the mitral valve, but the truth is that we can measure the vena contracta width on the mitral aortic and tricuspid valve. What are the advantages of measuring the vena contracta width? Number one is relatively quick and easy. Number two, is relatively independent of hemodynamic factors. Number three, is not affected by other valve leak. Number four, is good for extreme regurgitation, for example, mild versus severe. Number five, can be used in both central and eccentric jets. Measuring the vena contracta width also has some limitations. Number one, is not valid for multiple jets because there is a risk of underestimation. Number two, small measurement errors leads to large percentage of error. Number three, intermediate values needs confirmation. Number four, is affected by systolic changes in regurgitant flow. And number five, remember that the orifices have elliptical shape and there is always a risk of underestimation. Now that you know what is a regurgitation, how to assess a regurgitation, and what is the vena contracta, I will show you step by step how to measure the vena contracta diameter or width. Step number one, place the color scale between 50 and 70 centimeters per second. Step two, adjust focus setting to the level of the valve. Zoom in the image and use a narrow color sector to reduce error. Step number three, scroll frame by frame through the cardiac cycle for the largest jet area. Step four, measure the vena contracta, which is the smaller diameter of the jet. Step five, you can use the color compare option to properly visualize the neck. And step number six, you should always visualize the convergence zone when measuring the vena contracta diameter. As a recommendation when measuring the vena contracta diameter, try to obtain an average of two orthogonal planes or an average of two to three cardiac cycles. How do we know the severity of the jet based on the vena contracta diameter? When the vena contracta diameter is less than 0.3 centimeters, 
the regurgitation is more likely to be mild. When the vena contracta diameter is between 0.3 cm and 0.6 cm, the severity of the regurgitation is more likely to be moderate. And when the vena contracta diameter is more than 0.7 cm, the regurgitation is more likely to be severe. Thank you for watching, I really hope you like this video, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and see you on another video, bye!